Okay, so this is an introductory video to uh, use uh, block ramps in your RTL. So, uh, so uh, there are multiple ways to do that, but I prefer using this specific way. So um, I'll just cover it. So what I do is that uh, I use language templates. Uh, if you're using Xilinx ISC, language templates are uh, this icon. Uh, if I click it, so this window will open. So it won't be open by, by default. It was open already here. So here you can go to Verilog and then you can go to census constructs and then you can go to coding examples and then you can go to tram section and use block ramps so there are multiple ways uh, you can use block ramp the most general way is to use uh, two clocks and two read and write ports but uh, i am covering uh, the simpler way uh, simpler so is uh, so you can apply whatever you learn here on this as well so but i'm, I'm using uh, covering the simpler one that single port uh, read and write block ramp so here is an example code for that so uh, how to use this code is, the, uh, is that you uh, replace all these angle bracket things with whatever variable names that you prefer. So you can make a reg or wire, this will be an array and uh, uh, you can use it. So what we can copy this code and uh, make a maybe a new file and paste it here and save it as a uh, bram.p or something and uh, or copy this code inside our code somewhere what i personally prefer is that uh, i i create a module out of it so that whenever i require to use it i can just uh, instantiate that module so this is what i have done uh, already so uh, so i'll just open that file instead so this is the bram.v file that i've created out of this code I have replaced all the names uh, in the angle brackets with the variable names uh, and uh, I have made uh, the control signals like RAM enable, write enable, address, data in and data out as input and output ports uh, of this module. And, and another thing that I have done is that I have created these parameters uh, that can be used to uh, customize this block RAM uh, whichever way I like. So. Uh, so at the moment just focus on the first one so there are two variables ram width and ram address width so ram width defines the data width of the ram uh, that each value uh, will have this width so i i just want to uh, use uh, 32 by uh, 512 ram uh, in this case uh, this will uh, be one block ram in most of uh, fpgs uh, in your fpgs uh, it could use half of a block ram but most in most fpgs this is uh, uh, this is one block RAM. Uh, so one block RAM is generally 32 bit uh, wide and 512 deep uh, or you can configure it to be 16 bit wide and 1024 deep uh, and you can keep halving those uh, to single bit. So you can change the width from 1, uh, 2, 4, 8, 16 uh, and 32. So uh, in this specific case, you can change it to any value. So if there is an in-between value, it will just use uh, uh, use the block RAM, and some of the width, uh, some of the bits will be wasted, uh, which which was uh, uh, which has to be done anyway. So RAM address bit uh, is basically uh, how many uh, address bits are required. So if it's a 512 bit RAM, uh, 512 deep RAMs, that means there are 512 locations in the RAM then I have to have nine bits of address. You can take a log base two of uh, the number of locations that you want in your block RAM. So log base two of 512 is nine. So this basically means that uh, my address will be nine bits. So address will go from zero to, uh, if we uh, have all ones in nine bit, it will be 511. So its total address will be from zero to 511, which means that there will be total 512 locations. So this is the block RAM that I've uh, used. And here's the test bench. So in the test bench, I've just uh, initialized block RAM with some values. So uh, here I've uh, instantiated the block RAM. And this way I can give the parameters. At the moment, I've used the same parameters that I've used 32 bit wide and uh, nine bits for address. That means 512 deep block RAM. And I've used the same file name for uh, data file.txt, but I, I won't be using it in this example. I'll be uh, coming to this later on. So here in, in the test bench, I've written a, uh, a loop that uh, increases address from zero to 20 and writes data uh, 10 times the address. So on zero address, zero will be written on one address, uh, uh, 10 should be written and for 20 address, 200 should be written. 
so uh, then i have written uh, uh, reading loop where i just dsr read enable so here i have uh, dsr read enable and then i just uh, cycle through the addresses 20 times and uh, uh, and then read back whatever value i get so this is my test bench so if the values have been written correctly then i should read back 10 a 0 10 20 30 and so on uh, so here we will go through that so i'll just compile this code so this code is uh, um, in the same folder uh, here is the folder no it's not the folder there is the folder let me see so here is the folder where i'm writing this code so this is the bram.v file and this is the tbbram.v file so i'm just compiling uh, uh, these files and i want the output to be uh, VRAM. i'm using iverilog to compile it but you can use any uh, simulator that you want uh, so that's another uh, use of uh, using this uh, code that uh, you can make it simulator independent you can use whatever simulator you want you can use iverilog model same uh, xilinx isc or even quartus you can use anything you want so uh, it should run so now you can see that on address 0 we have data 0 on address 1 we have 10 and so on up to 190 so the next case is that uh, uh, we want to initialize it with the blog uh, with with a data file so i have created this data file that has uh, uh, values from uh, 400 to uh, to uh, uh, incrementing by 4 up to any value so uh, that doesn't matter so and now i'll come back to the parameters so uh, so if you look into the code, uh, there is an initial statement. This normally initial statements uh, do not synthesize, but in this case it does. Uh, in this case, what it does is that it, uh, it initializes the block RAM with the uh, with whatever file that we have given. So uh, in most FPGAs, we have this option that we can give a uh, uh, we can initialize our registers or block RAMs with values. So so this initial statement will do that. So I have created a parameter for file name, whatever file name we want. Uh, then uh, I have created two parameters start address and end address which are 0 to 10. So I just want to initialize from data file dot text but I just want to initialize from 0 to 10. So it is starting from in number is starting from 1 so we should go probably up to 11 so we will have up to 428 values uh, in the block RAM and we don't we won't have any other values uh, after that. So, um, so that that's the way we uh, use uh, this these uh, parameters. So, in, in this, this is start address and address and data file. So, I've given the same values in. Uh, I I haven't given any value to start address and end address here. So, that means if we don't give any value, then the values in the uh, in the original RTL this file these will be uh, considered the default values so if i don't specify a value the parameters values here will be chosen but if i specify here uh, something then this will be overridden so whatever i will specify uh, while instantiating will be used instead so these three values will be initialized but uh, rest of the values that is start address and end address won't change so if i copy paste here and i change them then i'll be able to change them so in this case i don't want to uh, write something into the block name. I just want to read it uh, to verify whether whatever I have written has been actually written on the block name or not. So I'll recompile it. Uh, I'll just quickly go through it. Let's recompile. Just I'll run it. So uh, you see that these are decimal values. So I just want to print them in hex because I have written values in hex. So I will use percentage h in dollar display that means that we are we want it in hex so i'll just clear the screen recompile it and rerun it so here you can see that we get values from 400 to 428 the, uh, the first 0 to 10 values and rest of the values are not initialized so if i change uh, change it uh, maybe i ever want to initialize some more values so i can uh, maybe copy paste from here to test bench the parameters and I can change the values maybe so okay dot and I don't want to initialize uh, till 10 values I want to initialize till let's say 15 values instead so insert comma here 
in the comma here so instead of 10 i want to use 15. so let's say uh, do that so if i now compile it again and run it again now you can see that in we have five more values here so that that are used for initialize similar way if i want to use a different file i've uh, created another file uh, data file 2.txt that instead of 400 starts it go to c uh, so uh, if i just change the well file name from data file to data file 2 so now instead of data file which was the default value or given here it, it will be overridden by this value so now I should I should clear the screen. So CLS and I'll just recompile and rerun it. So now you can see that it starts from uh, four to C instead. So what I like about this uh, specific op uh, way to use blog RAMs is that once I have made this module, I can reuse it uh, whenever I want to instantiate a blog RAM. Otherwise, uh, if I just need one blog RAM, I generally prefer the other way, uh, which is using uh, device primitive instantiation. So here I just need to just instantiate a blog RAM instance. It's just the instance. I don't need to write any code, just copy paste this code and just tie specific ports. This also works, but this will only instantiate one uh, block run so uh, normally we uh, we want to have uh, this option that uh, instead of just one block ram i want to have a bigger block ram uh, so if i i want to have a block ram that is as big as 16 block rams of uh, uh, in a in an fpj i can just change uh, this uh, ram address bit uh, i can increase four bits here so it will be increased so it's it's very flexible so uh, and, uh, so I don't need to uh, use core generator or anything that is uh, the tool specific thing and uh, I can reuse it again. Uh, similarly, if we, I want to port it on some other FPGA, for example, uh, uh, on Intel's FPGAs. So in that case, I can just uh, modify if they have a, a code variant for this, uh, although I think it should work there as well, but if it doesn't, then we can use their template and we can keep the wrapper common that the wrapper remains the same and just copy paste the code from uh, from Intel language templates and use that instead. So uh, so I'll have to make minimum changes in the uh, in, in the code if if I use that. So it it makes it somewhat platform invariant. That that's uh, what I like about it. So uh, it's platform invariant. It's flexible. I can change the size. Uh, uh, the other ways that I haven't discussed is that you can also use a Xilinx core generator. So here is a Xilinx core generator uh, that that can uh, that has a core for block memory generator. Uh, similarly, if you are using uh, Vivado and uh, IP integrator, then you can um, add block memory generator IP as well. So uh, so here is the block memory generator IP. This is as flexible as uh, as the uh, method I have told you. So if you're using uh, using uh, Vivado and uh, IP integrated design flow, then it's probably better to use this flow that you use uh, uh, this block memory generator IP. But if you are using uh, RTL flow that you are, you are writing uh, Verilog or VLDL RTL, then it's probably better to use uh, this, this variant that I have discussed. So that's it.